Greetings, Pilgrims, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. And today, we are going to briefly discuss the creation of this uh, front door for my house project. Now, this door here, uh, we're just going to be talking about the door itself, the hardware involved, the hinges, and the front handle here. This piece here is just for decoration as far as helping us to, no pun intended, frame the door in our scene here. So, uh, it's not really going to go over a lot of the modeling here, but, you know, a door is essentially a piece of wood. <laughs> So it's a giant rectangle, however, um, or box rather, uh, we did have to do some clever unwrapping for this. Now you may notice when you do research for doors, the way they are constructed is you have these different directions going for the grain. So for example, these two edge pieces here, these tall pieces here, this and this, that grain is going up and down or vertically inside each of the panels the grain is going vertically even though this panel is primarily horizontally oriented its grain is still going vertically then this piece in here just these three polygons and these three polygons here and these three at the bottom and these three at the top are all oriented horizontally so now if I bring up my UVs I can show you what this looks like so each of these pieces had to be rotated and stacked in here to make sure that they are following the proper grain and this allowed me to put a big basically a big chunk of wood as far as the material and all of it would be horizontal or vertical as appropriate to its position in the actual construction of the door but it makes dealing with one material a lot easier now on top of the wood we have the hardware so if I zoom in over here you'll see this is the actual door handle these plates that it's nailed into. This is the door jam where the uh, the little sledge comes out. And then we have the handle here that you would hold on to and turn. And this is the little knob to lock the deadbolt. Then down here, we have our three sets of the uh, hinges. Now the center part are the cylind cylindrical pieces and then the panels here, the edges and the top and bottom cap for each. And this is because we wanted to make sure that we I position them so that you know which one is the top. It's always at the top of each group. Each group is a mirror of itself. Now these are all hand packed so there's slight, you know, slight modifications there. But then the, this is the top and this is the bottom one, this is the middle one, always. That way we know which is which and there's never a question. And that way it's nice and organized. And now what we will do eventually is I'm going to take this one and pack all three of them on top of it and then offset them by one shell so every single hinge will be painted the exact same which is not a big deal because hinges are not that kind of thing you pay that much attention to but it needs to be there and it needs to be painted and that way then I will just not disturb this section of the UVs it's been almost permanently re reserved so every other door that I create every other type of door that has regular door hinges this little box here will be reserved for the hinge and that way then I just attach a hinge to it, the hinge UVs go right here. I can copy and paste and cut out that material swatch, if you will, and put it right in there. And that way now I have a hinge every time I need one. So that was the UVs for this. The big trick here was just rotating them, uh, cutting out the actual panels. So the door, which is primarily a uh, rectangular object when it comes to a UV shell, actually ends up being lots of thin strips of wood here. And that's what helps us to create the crisscross pattern. Okay, so now that we're done here inside of Maya, let's jump over to Substance Painter. So here we are in Substance Painter, and this is our final door painted here. If we zoom in here, we can see how, how nice this turned out. The hardware looks especially nice. There's our where it's a little sledge where the deadbolt comes out. We got some screws, we got some wear and tear, and we've even got, if you see along the edge here, and it might be a little too subtle for the video to pick up but even there we go I can see some of it right in here you can see we've got some of the um, fingerprints and things that would be left on the metal from constant use even some on the wood here and that's in a section I'll talk about in a second over here we can turn that on or off if we want to and then the wood itself you can see what I'm talking about with the grains here so the grain in the center might be yeah the video is picking up okay so we have our vertical sections here, vertical on the edge like I talked about. But then you can see here there's this line where it gets divided and now this section is going horizontally. And then vertical, horizontal, vertical. If I zoom out you'll see what I'm talking about. So down here, horizontal, vertical. So that's the wood grain B 
being affected, but you'll notice that they're all facing the appropriate direction over here, and I don't have to have multiple layers of wood texture at different uh, angles in order to achieve this. And then let's check out our hardware on the um, <clears throat> on the hinge side of the house. So there we go, we've got our hinges and the top cap there. And that top cap, we're going to be able to put some dirt around that, some grease around it, that sort of thing. So that guy's not quite done. I th I'm going to mess with the hinges a bit more. There's a little bit of cleanup to do, and I wanted to make sure that those hinges are going to be reused a lot. So I want to make sure that they're pretty perfect. All right, so let's do a quick overview of the texture that we have going on here. I'll zoom in on the hardware. It's something nice to nice to look at. There we go. So our texture layers over here, very important. So we have our wood at the bottom here, and that is just everywhere that is going to be wood. So if we look at our mask here, that's what we have, just the wood areas. Nothing too special there. And this is a wood walnut that comes with a substance painter. I just really liked it. I wanted just a, a wooden front door. So we're just going to go ahead and use that. Now the hardware layer here, I have an old brass. And again, this has a, um, a mask, which it's still loading the mask. But the mask is on there. I did turn off the scratches and some of the oxidation because I want it to be old and, you know, it's been used a little bit, but not quite, you know, dilapidated. So I chose to turn some of those things off. All right, and we have up here the hinges. They have their own section. And this is using a galvanized steel. It's not quite the exact material that is used in the real world, but it looks really good here in Painter. So, and then it looks really good in UE as well. So, not technically the correct material, but it looks like the correct material, which is correct for what we're trying to do. So, that's that for the hinges. They're pretty simple, nothing really going on there. Now, the real magic up here is with our details layer. So here's all the different things that we go into making, all the subtle things. So for example, the fingerprints here. What this is using, if I bring this up here, there is a fingerprint uh, here in the brushes. And what's really nice about this brush is it randomizes your, uh, your angle. So when you click, you'll notice here in this little section here. Let's zoom in on that and let's get the, get the video to look at that. Okay. So each of these was created using just one set size, but it randomizes the size slightly and it randomizes the angle. So then it really, you just click, 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 click. It's very fun. And you get a nice little smattering of, here's where people typically hold the door. You would grab it here to swing it closed or to hold it open, that kind of thing. And this is a little over-exaggerated just so it shows up for you guys. Uh, otherwise, I would really kind of maybe half, half of this strength but you can see it only really plays in with the light. It's not affecting the actual material as far as color or metalness or any of that nature. Then we have our screws, and the screws layer here is only speaking to the screws that are here involved in the hinges. Then my brass screws are different, but very similar and a neat little trick here. The screws use the tools, screw bolt, and I just set my size. But for the brass screws, what I did was I turned off the color. So now I still get the metalness of a screw, but it adopts the color to the area that it's selected into. And that way when I click it in these areas here, it's gonna give me that brassy look to it without having to worry about coloring it brass as well as it being a screw, it just adopts it. So then I just say, you know what, just don't worry about the color, just adopt whatever color you're gonna be placed in that area. And just worry about being a metal screw and it does the work for you. Now this hardware norm, this layer is talking about this section here where the little jam comes out when you go to lock the deadbolt. And this section in here, which is these cut lines into, because this is a piece that is inset into this metal framing here with the lock and tumbler in there. So to get this inset and to get these lines and then the actual hole where the key would go, I have a layer here that is using a mask and this mask is my color selection from my ID. And is there a way to look at the ID larger? There it is. So it's kind of difficult to see, but this image, I can show you in Photoshop in a moment. All it really is is in the top corner there, we have the different colors for the things that we want to select. So this is just a mask to allow me to use a black color with normal, and I put it down quite a bit, and then pushed into the surface. So that's all that really is for. 
and then this lock push. That's for the actual lock itself to push it out. So then I do the same thing, but then push here. You can see that it's still set for that one, just a little bit above zero, not quite even 0.2, just a little bit up. We push that. And then on top of everything, we throw a dirt. And this is my favorite standard kind of dirt. Uh, it helps to add just those little grime in the crevices and cracks to bring out, to pop the, the highlights and the, you know, the, the hills by filling in the valleys. And it really helps to pop any material. So what I do is it's a paint layer, solid black, no metallic, solid roughness all the way up, and then just slightly above zero for the height, just slightly. And then I just throw it on top of everything. And that adds a little bit of dirt and you know more believability to the surface. So let's, uh, as we were talking about uh, doing these um, insets here using the mask, let's go ahead and over to Photoshop and look at those masks. So here they are here, very simple. Really, this is kind of a throwaway, so I didn't even really bother labeling much. But as you can see here, anything that is the solid red color, so if I scroll over a little bit so we can see them all at once. So this, and then that outline, and this outline, and the actual hole where the key goes in. Anything that is that red color inside of Painter is gonna get pushed inward. So that gets pushed inward for this hardware norm. So that's what that is right there. So push in there, push in here, push in around that thing and push in for the keyhole. Now, then I used another color here and another color here just so that I had the option of doing two different layers if I wanted to of pushing this surface up a bit and then pushing the surface even up further from that. Didn't really find it necessary, so I just used both of them. And you'll see that's another really neat thing if you wanna make multiple selections. So for example, if I go to lock push, and I go to my color selection, you'll see that I can select multiple colors here. And anytime I say pick color, it's gonna show me my mask, which is really neat. So I don't really wanna pick a color, so I'll just escape out of that. But you can select multiple colors. So you could have a mask that is multicolored and then use that same mask multiple times and say, for the dirt, I just wanted one color. For this, I actually wanna choose multiple colors. So something like this would be really handy for if I did the uh, the mandala thing again, but here in Painter, oh my god, the color masking is amazing for that. You can make such great selections. So that's a neat little trick too, so keep that in your back pocket. So back over to Photoshop. Uh, the other thing I did to make sure that when I was doing the grain, here's the final final material here, the, um, the base color for it. When I was making sure that the grain was going the correct direction, like here I have horizontal, here I have vertical, I made this new pattern in Photoshop, which is just this red arrow pointing upward, but I made it into a pattern so then what I can do here is say fill, come on, Photoshop is complaining, there we go, fill with a pattern, and see it's still selected, there we go, and if I fill that, you see I get all these crazy arrows, that way when I'm looking at my UVs, and I look at this with my UVs, I'm not even going to show you here in Photoshop, in uh, Maya rather, let's, uh, use our textures texture there it is yep you can still see it so this these arrows help me make sure that this part had to be horizontal that these parts are going to be vertical horizontal vertical horizontal etc so that material was very helpful for getting my uvs straight uh, no pun intended so that that helped very much there so just a simple material inside of photoshop nothing crazy but it really helped to make sure that all of this lined up properly. All right, so that's all there is here for Painter. It was quite simple and uh, turned out really nice. So make sure you name everything, put it into groups, keep it organized, it makes it so much easier to work on. So now let's jump over to Unreal. Jump over to Unreal and let's take a look at our final product. So again, as I mentioned, I put this uh, the door frame here, I'm still working on this, so this is not anywhere near done. Uh, I still have to put in the little bottom sections and the glass and the top section and the glass. But uh, what I did was I just took this model, whatever state it was in, uh, threw it into Hedis UV so I could UV it really quick and then throw it in here so we can see it with a door and then the door by itself so that we can see it uh, by itself. And you can see how nice the materials came out here. They look absolutely gorgeous inside of uh, Unreal here. So let's take a look around, we'll run around. Celebratory gunfire, there we go. 
So now, walk up to the door, and this is about how we'll see it in, in game. We'll be able to get a little closer. This bounding box thing is driving me a little crazy. But there you go. You walk up to the front door. It's looking nice. Go around back. Say so you're inside and you're going to walk outside. You can actually see the door handle. We can animate the door handle to turn as the door opens. And you see our hinges here. Now this door I turned off collision so we can actually get a little closer to it and look at it a little bit better. And actually if you get close to the edge here you can do this round the corner thing. And it's a really nice camera angle. <laughs> Very cinematic all of a sudden to uh, look at our door handle there and you can see the screws. Uh, I don't know if you can actually see it's quite subtle the change in light for the uh, the little fingerprints uh, there you can see it up on the door much better. So you can see how that's working and then we have our uh, hinges here hinges you can't quite get too close to to actually see but it's one of those things where you would know it's missing if it wasn't there but you have to have it there and then when you do have it there it's it ends up being so small, it's just a, a minor detail, but the hardware looks nice. The hardware is kind of the biggest thing you see. You walk up to it and it's so shiny. So the door looks great, guys, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, I'm just going to keep, I have this big project. I'm going to be building a lot of house stuff. So as I learn interesting things, I want to share them with you, and uh, I will I will do so. So uh, I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the, the process of creating this door, uh, any questions around the modeling, I could go over that if you want. It's pretty simple. Uh, the material you saw, nothing really crazy. Just make sure that you plan out your material. Make sure you plan out what you need to do. And uh, proper planning yields dividends in results here because now the material looks awesome inside of Engine. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy with the result. Oh, one last thing. The material for this is quite simple, but I'll show it to you. Uh, here he is over here. Let's dock that. So the way that uh, Painter exports maps specifically set to be in uh, Unreal, it's a stacked material like a like a Rama. Uh, so oops, like an Arma. Excuse me. Where did it go? There we go. I think that it got crazy there for a second. Anyway, if I look at the material here, you can see each layer, uh, each channel here rather, is a different uh, material. So this is our alpha, or, sorry, our ambient occlusion is in our red channel. And green, I believe, is our roughness. And then blue is our metallic. So it's all packed for you. And it actually tells you uh, the layer order in the actual name of the material. So if you look at the name of the material, it's occlusion, roughness, metallic. Yeah, so if you just do RGB, occlusion, roughness, metallic. That's what they are. So it's just a simple hookup of everything. However, you do have to change this sampler type to be linear color to allow you to, to split each of these channels. It'll, it'll throw an error at you if you don't. So then I just hook all these things up. And it doesn't look like much over here on this weird little ball, but uh, as we've seen in, in the engine here, the door looks fantastic. So that's all for this week, guys. Uh, I am going to be on travel, so I will be back to give you a new episode next week. Uh, again, whatever we learn, we just keep going. So as always, uh, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.